This podcast is meant for general health information and is not meant to override any medical advice. All questions will be screened and not contain any personal information. If you want a private consultation, contact us via positivechoice.org or you can contact your provider directly. Thank you and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to the Positive Choice Wellness Podcast. I am Annalise, an exercise physiologist and nutritionist. And my name is Melanie. I'm also an exercise physiologist and nutritionist. And we would like to welcome back our very special guest, Shannon Nolte. Hello. Hooray. She's back again. (laughs) Hurrah. (laughs) Well, I think one of our favorite guests. I have so much fun. So you you guys just... We'll get me often. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't know Shannon, uh, she is part of our team here at Positive Choice. Um, she works with the bariatric population, the medical weight management, and, you know, she's just awesome to talk to. Thanks. <laughs> so glad to be here. And pretty soon, uh, Solutions, uh, the Help with Food Addiction course. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you have any like long-term dieting issues, issues around food, our solutions class is top notch. Definitely. Definitely. I'm very excited. And you'll be a really awesome asset to that team too. Cause I know that you kind of like, you specialize that a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I worked for over five years as an eating disorder therapist prior to moving out to California. So um, worked in outpatient um, settings, you know, one-on-one counseling, family counseling, couples counseling, as well as um, in the uh, higher levels of care, which would be, you know, inpatient, residential, and uh, partial hospitalization where they are there all day and go home at night. But Yeah. So lots of um, work with eating disorders of all varieties. <laughs> it's always so fascinating. I mm-hmm. love to pick your brain about that. But today we're going to talk about expectations. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how those get in our way. Totally. <laughs> um, you know, our stinking thinking can often get us off track. Um, we have big, powerful brains that help us a lot, but they can also set expectations or ideas or put us on paths that maybe aren't very realistic for us or where we actually want to be in our life. So so these expectations, in a sense, can it kind of affect us in every area, not mm-hmm. just, you know, because we talk a lot about wellness and health and stuff in this yeah. particular podcast, but this really can apply everywhere. 100%. Like, I mean, kind of as simple as like, you know, if there's a new movie coming out and everybody's saying it's the greatest movie of all time, you're going to love it, just get ready, it's going to be so awesome, and then you see it and you're like, ooh. It was good, I guess, but, (laughs) you know, and then like for dieting specifically too, like all those diet ads and commercials of like, you're going to date so much more, be happier, be more successful, X, Y, and Z. And then you get there and it's like, well, maybe I still have a lot of the same issues that were there. And it's not quite this, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that I was thinking. Or that, you know, you'll lose the 30 pounds in 30 days and then you'll never have a problem with weight again. All my issues are gone. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, And I think it's, um, you know, part of it is advertisers wanting to sell a product. Right. And I think it's they know how to hook people. And it's I think part of being in this journey is figuring out, okay how do I fit into this? What are, what do I need out of a health and wellness plan? What do I need out of a health journey? Like what will actually, you know, help me get to physical, mental, spiritual wellness, all that jazz. So in a sense, you're really talking about realistic expectations. hundred percent, hundred percent. And how, who's to say, right? We, if we don't know, we don't know, but like, gosh, there's just so much out there of like external pe- things and sources telling us what we should or shouldn't do or what it should look like. Well, when you talk about like the weight loss side of things, mm-hmm. I always think to like the Instagram posts we see constantly where they steal other people's weight loss photos and attach it to some <laughs> diet product and go, they use this special detox tea or whatever right. it is. And you're like, no, no, <laughs> that's not true. But the thing is, we know it's not true, but does the average population know that? Probably not. Right. 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 Um, I mean, I think that's exactly right. Um, I think, and I don't mean ignorant in the sense where people are, you know, turning a blind eye knowingly, but I think that a lot of these ads and these 
kind of expectations are coming from a naive place or a, even an ignorant place that just don't know um, and not really connecting with yourself or uh, why do I want to lose weight? Why do I want to, you know, start exercising? They tell me I should, but why should I? Really, like, why do I want to? So before we turned this off, we were having a conversation as you walked in, Shannon, about um, beauty expectations mm -hmm. and how easy it is as a woman to look at social media, to look at media in general and get so lost in the expectation of what I should look like, what I should look like for my age, mm -hmm. um, and all of this messaging, and then we internalize it. Right. Right. And then what does that then do to, you know, how, how I feel in myself, then how do I treat myself if my expectations don't match up with the reality of a situation, right? Like, you know, thinking about weight loss or beauty. How then do I talk to myself or care for myself if I don't fit a certain standard that I think or I've heard is acceptable or right or okay? You know, like how, how do we treat things that we don't like? Probably not very good. And like if it's ourselves that we're kind of saying this isn't good enough or this doesn't match what I, an ideal is, then how, how then do I treat myself based on that? It's, I think, a really loaded um, thing. Um, Lots and lots of women definitely experience that. And I think, you know, a lot of men do too in different ways, of course, but um, there is probably more of that societal pressure of youth, beauty, uh, and goodness and badness, depending on if you fit or don't fit, so to speak. Yeah. And I, I, we also see that a lot, I think, in our classes mm -hmm. too, with the expectation of, you know, when you, you have to be a certain weight to be accepted by yeah. society and all this kind of stuff too. And you have to look a certain way and be a certain way and you can't be too muscular. You have to be the right amount of muscular, right. but then if you're a guy, you have to be extra muscular and it's toxic, um, totally. <laughs> <laughs> on so many levels, but obviously these, these expectations they're getting for these standards mm -hmm. are societal. Yeah. So where would someone start if they want to modify their expectations mm -hmm. like what what do you do yeah so i think you know i think the first place is to like okay so say i have a desire to lose weight right or say i have a desire to change a habit that i have heard is a good you know thing for wellness whatnot maybe start mindfulness right why do i want to do that just ask yourself what what's motivating me okay so i want to lose some weight why? Why do I want to lose weight? What do I think will get me? What will it gain me? Right? And so we keep kind of asking ourselves, why, what will that get me until we kind of get to this like core thing. And, you know, if it matches with like, I want to have a, you know, healthier lifestyle, I want to live longer, I want to be able to engage in my life a certain way. Or maybe it's I want to feel accepted, maybe it's I want to feel loved, right? We kind of keep boiling it down until we get to something that feels like tangible, um, because if we're trying to fix, you know, I want to feel accepted, loved, cared for with weight, it's going to be a miss, right? And we're going to keep missing that target. So not to say that, you know, to stop anything, but if we can focus in, why do I want to do this? We can sort of meet our expectations accordingly. Not to say we stop, you know, going for those vegetables or those, um, you know, going for those walks and whatnot, but really looking at like what... What's driving my behaviors? What's driving my motivations? Yeah, I was just having a conversation yesterday mm -hmm. with some of my patients about this exactly with looking at like, if you are self-sabotaging, mm -hmm. if you are finding yourself continually doing old behaviors that uh, are against what your goals are, right. what your health goals are, that there is there is some underlying reward right. that you are trying to get, that you associate with that behavior. And if you want to get rid of that behavior, you have to figure out what it is you're going for mm -hmm. so that you can actually replace it with something that is meaningful in that department. Right. Because yeah, if I'm wanting to feel more loved, mm -hmm. my idea might be that 
if I'm thinner or prettier, I will be more lovable and therefore then I will be loved. Yeah. That's a fallacy. So you're basically chasing something. Right. That is not going to give you what you're actually looking uh, yes. for. Yes. Um, I used to work with um, this psychiatrist at the uh, treatments that I worked at, and she always used to call it the shiny object, right? It's the thing that holds our attention that kind of keeps like flitting off in the side that we keep focusing on that pulls our attention away from the thing that's more tender, more vulnerable, more like difficult to work on. Um, and so often, you know, when we think about like some of these wellness, you know, kicks we get into, they might be based on that shiny object of that thing that's kind of pulling my attention away from maybe some of the other things that are um, going on. Not always, but some, a lot of times it can. And like my first thought goes to, because of all, you know, I have classes where I ask people like, what's your motivation? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to lose weight? What are, what are your goals? Like, what are you trying to do this for? It, you know, sometimes you get some of the good yeah. responses, like, oh, they're really doing this to, like, to change their health and really make a difference for themselves. But some people are like, I want to wear a size 12, or I want to be a 2, and they just give you these random numbers, mm -hmm. and they just want to lose weight to fit into smaller clothes. Yeah. And while I'm not going to invalidate that if that is a, a reason you want to lose weight or be healthier, but... I feel like there, there's more to it than just mm -hmm. fitting into a smaller pair of pants. Right. And that's the story they're telling themselves because they don't want to cope with the reality of what they're actually trying to strive for. Yeah, I know. It's like, what, what, what do you see yourself doing when you get to that size, right? Like, what would be different about your life? Are, are you trying to say that I won't be more valuable as a human <laughs> being in a smaller pant size? Your value is not found in <laughs> pant sizes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw that marketed at the Levi's store. <laughs> Nobody told me that in the fashion magazines I grew up in. <laughs> but it's true. You're right. Like those darn ads, they kind of, again, I go back to it, but they do sell a certain like, <laughs> this is who you should be and everything will be fine. And you're worthy and you're great and you're awesome. Yeah. I mean, not that we need to go down this rabbit hole in particular, but when we look at that type of marketing for women, it's always about as a woman, your value rests on your looks. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you can have all this other stuff, but if you are perceived as ugly or unattractive, that will become, you could be the top person in your field, right. super valuable. You could save the world. And if you need a lip wax, guess what they will all be focused on. 100%. Right? So we're taught that. So then you add that into, you should look like this. This makes you valuable as a woman. Mm -hmm. Then that just instantly wraps us right. up and like, okay, it's all well and good but we need to be able to fit into right. those particular genes. Right. And I think that that's where sort of this like, um, and not everyone's going to feel this way, but this is the first word that's coming to my mind is like sort of that desperation for it, right? I need to lose this weight or I have to lose this weight. And yes, there are some real health impacts with it, but you know, it feels so impactful because it's linked with like, this is what's going to fix some of these internal feelings sometimes for people, right? And so it feels very desperate and it feels really hard um, if there's, you know, bumps along the way or if natural sort of ebbs and flows with motivation happen or maybe there's weeks where there's a lot of parties and a lot of fun things and so maybe we eat off plan, right? It feels really impactful because this sort of like, you know, kind of hope of what I'm going to feel like at the end of this is disappeared, right? Now, like, so I'll share like a, a kind of a story of, of a patient that I had mm -hmm. because I find this interesting because I always use it as a reference for like all or nothing thinking. Yeah. But I had a woman take one of my classes once and I don't know what her ultimate motivation mm -hmm. was for losing weight, but uh, she had lost like 20 pounds and she was doing really well. Mm -hmm. She'd been going to class for a few weeks and everything was hunky dory. And then she had one week and like, I saw it consistently every week. She was down, down, down one week. She gained a pound. Mm -hmm. I never saw her again. Mm. Never saw her again after that. And she never came back to class. And I can only relate it to the fact that I think, because I don't know for certain is that she expected a loss. Mm -hmm. There wasn't one. And she's like, I'm a failure. I give up. I, this isn't working. Yeah. So in that scenario, assuming those are the pr 
you know, pieces to the puzzle because I don't really know the full story, yeah. but I do, I knew know what I saw mm-hmm. and what, what I experienced. Um, you know, how could you go about changing that, you know, mindset or, or shifting, or maybe it's like, is there, you have to step back from that and think, wait, what, what, what's going on here? What have I done so far? Like, how do you, how would you go about a scenario like that? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you, you know, I think you're talking really powerfully about how shame can motivate us, right? Like that idea of like versus guilt where it's like, I did a bad thing. Shame is I am bad. Mm. Um, and so, you know, we don't know this person. We don't, I can't say like necessarily, but I would imagine there's a ton of shame there and like her, you said her, right? Yeah. Uh, and it will, I mean, their, whatever they go yeah, with, but uh, there, I, you know, those feelings of like, I am good or bad. Right. And I think so much of this, like, um, we can move away from with the idea of moving away from like, how is weight related to my, you know, my path, me being on this path, because it's sort of like that gold star, um, like you get as a kid on your like homework, like I did a good thing or I did a bad thing. And we can't always, as you guys probably could speak a lot better to like we can't always affect our weight right we can do a lot of things but you know say it's that time of the month or say we ate something that was saltier or we just weren't able to get enough water in or we're stressed or didn't get enough sleep right um, we can't always influence the scale like we did the week before and so those sort of like that intentionality on weigh-ins I think can sometimes create extra levels of shame of like you know you did great this week or maybe better next time. Not saying that you were even saying stuff like that, but you know, it's like, I think that's the things that kind of we talk about with weight. We praise people when they lose weight and we sort of say like, Oh, are are you okay? If you like gain weight, right? Um, Uh, Not kidding. I went to a weight loss meeting a while back and, uh, (laughs) I stepped on the scale, uh, to, you know, I I had a rough week. I wasn't, I wasn't doing what I should have been doing, as I say, and that's a bad word even to use then. But at the time, you know, I was like, I had should have been doing this. And I wasn't, I came in and I step on, I had a gain and the woman turns to me and goes, so what happened? Yeah. And I felt so ashamed in that moment. I never wanted to come back. I never wanted to come back from her response to that. And that's part of why I will never ever comment on what someone does in class, good or bad, unless someone brings up, go, I lost a pound. Like, yay. Right. But normally I won't bring it up because there's no reason to, Mm -hmm. unless they want to bring it up themselves. Right. Exactly. Um, because for some people, like a big win is being consistent and walking for, you know, every day this week or getting up and, um, not playing next on that next episode or, you know, finding just one different coping strategy, um, one night of the week rather than like overeating. Right. Um, sometimes it's those little small things that have nothing to do with weight, but they make such a difference at getting you closer to that core thing of like, if I can just treat myself a little different. If I can do these like sort of pro self things, I get a little bit closer to self acceptance. I get a little bit closer to like feeling like a worthy person. I get a little bit closer to accepting myself. Right. Um, it's those behaviors just like you would in a relationship. Right. Um, and then in turn, it just shifts your expectations. Yeah, totally. It kind of, it kind of naturally will flow into that. Right. 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 I mean, like I've seen this a lot with, um, people I work with, but as well as, uh, uh, people like my own self, right. This idea of, um, like as soon as I stopped focusing on dieting and I started focusing on like, well, I like moving because my back doesn't hurt anymore. The whole reason I got into a consistent workout routine was because, you know, I can walk without pain. Um, that's the first time in my life that it's been like that. And the rest was because like, oh, you know, I need to look better in a bathing suit or I want to, um, I got a wedding coming up and I want to look really good in it. And it never stuck because of those external reasons. But when it connected with like, you know, I want to not have pain when I walk. I want to, you know, be able to hike, which is something a big value add for me. Or I want to go on a, like, I want to travel and be able to walk around for a full day without having to like continuously find a seat. Right. So it's like, I think when we can kind of get back to ourselves and what are my expectations of myself in my life versus my expect, like what I think other people's expectations of me are in my life. And it's a, it's a process, right? It takes time. Um, it's a journey for a reason. (laughs) Um, uh, but you know, I think that's ultimately can, what can kind of 
bridge the gap between the two and make long-standing, long-lasting changes in the way we treat ourselves. That, it made me think of um, something I heard recently on another podcast uh -huh. uh, with Glennon Doyle. And she was saying that there is a difference between spending your time focusing on how the world sees mm -hmm. you rather than how you see the world yeah. and where are you going to put your, um, your efforts? Yeah. I like that. Um, where do I focus my attention? <laughs> is it what I think about myself or is it what I think others think about myself? And, you know, there's a certain melding of the two that does kind of have to be like, we don't want to be, you know, jerks in public, but you know, we also want to have, <laughs> you know, a good sense of identity and a good sense of like, you know, this is, a life led for me and not a life led for others um, and not a life led because of others. Um, we can have people we care about in our lives, but yeah, it's... Well, and isn't that, I mean, I feel like this is knowledge you get from growing mm -hmm. older. It's yeah. like the most, val one of the most valuable things we get growing older yeah. is because I think, at least for me, coming into this life as an adult, there was an expectation that you follow the rules, you go to college, you get the job, mm -hmm. you marry the guy, you, you know, buy the house yeah. and your life will be happy. Right. And, um, I, I remember very clearly, like early on, I was married, we had bought the house and I was sitting at home and I just had this moment of like, wow. Like I have the college degree, the ring on my finger, and I have the house, and I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. And that that moment was such like a huge moment for me because I was like, oh, that's powerful. So there isn't like a set, and then right. everything that came after that is like, oh yeah, life is unconventional right. and it doesn't look anything like we're told right. to expect. Well, and I think that's bravery right there is to when you notice. I feel this, right? You noticed that in that moment. You noticed like this isn't right. Um, something's off, right? And you followed yourself, like followed what that feeling was and you that's bravery to follow that. And I think that that does take a lot of bravery to say like, you know, okay, I'm gonna set my expectations aside and I'm gonna still do the things that I know are gonna be impactful for me. And, and I think something worth noting, too, when we're talking about breaking down expectations mm -hmm. is if you really want to take yourself down to your foundation and rethink your life from the bottom, it's hard uh -huh. and it's painful and it's not a movie montage. <laughs> nope. It's not a movie montage of crying and then like running up some stairs. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's crying. Okay. I feel better at crying some more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You like, and flow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's uncomfortable. It's the hardest work you'll ever yeah. do to really strip down your true expectations and do something different. It's so true. Um, and I'm glad you said that because, you know, it's, um, so uncomfortable and like, that's the thing that you need to welcome when this happens is because I think so often when we, um, feel those things, we want to say something's wrong. I need to close this door, go back to what I was doing before right and like away. avoid, avoid, <laughs> avoid. Right. Um, but that's sort of like when we lean into that discomfort, it goes like everything ebbs and flows. It's that like natural progression, you know, the wheel of life, right? Where it's like sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down. And if we sit with a down for a little bit, we're not harming or like in a place where we're not harming ourselves. But if we kind of lean into that discomfort a little bit, it naturally goes up again. And we're a little bit closer to our values or a little bit closer to where we want to be. But we have to sit with that discomfort to make us feel our feelings. I know. It's <laughs> like <worst>. that. <laughs> As a perpetual avoider of feelings, I feel I feel your pain. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I relate to this. <laughs> no, totally. I remember the first time I went to a therapist, I was probably like early 20s, and she was like, so how did you feel back then? And I was like, well, what do you mean? And like, I just kept giving her thought after thought after thought. She's like, you need to like get in touch with your feelings. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like a new language. And so like sometimes you just have to get like, you have to learn the language of your own feelings and be comfortable 
curing and it. <laughs> and there's something cathartic in that too, though, because like when you do kind of sit with your feelings, mm-hmm. as, as terrifying as it may be, as uncomfortable as it may be, it gets better because mm-hmm. when you actually experience them, then you don't have to use other means of like stifling them. Totally. And you can go, all right, I felt that. It sucked. But it's done now. Yeah. And now I can move on with my life or and at least move forward. Not right. necessarily like change anything because it's the past or whatever it may have been. A hundred percent. You know, it's like I felt it. I got through it and maybe I treated myself really well. And so it's it builds that respect. Um, I think about it like anytime you have like, I don't know, like a fight with someone and it's like it's actually like a good fight. And I'm not talking about like we're yelling names at each other and we're gonna, like digging dirty, like up dirty kind of digs and all that jazz but like we're arguing about something and we're like opposing points and then we kind of start seeing each other's point of view and then I feel so much closer to this point like this person once we kind of get through that fight and it's like I hear you I understand you you understand me we've come to this mutual ground it's kind of like that when you like feel your feelings and you kind of sit with it and get through it like I respect myself more after that oh yeah Uh and I personally feel like you don't have a real relationship with someone Uh until you fought 100% (laughs) because if you can't survive a fight it's not a real relationship and so I if we use that same logic I love that if we use that same logic with ourselves right how do we have a real relationship with ourselves if we don't see the let ourselves experience or see those sides of ourselves are we like sheltering ourselves in right. a sense, sheltering ourselves from the bad? Mm-hmm. Right. I just I just had this like mind blown moment uh-huh. of with <laughs> of that because yeah that that is true when mm-hmm. when we are avoiding our pain, avoiding the loss of expectation mm-hmm. or what what we thought. That is exactly like if you had a relationship of some kind, Mm -hmm. you're mad at the person, and instead of fighting it out, you leave. You ghost them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we do when we are, like, numbing out, is we are leaving ourselves. Or we give up on ourselves if we gained that pound, or we give up on our process if we had a bad night um, or a bad week. and I think it probably also has a lot to do, too, with, like, you know, I can't remember if this is Renee that we were talking to about this, but, like, a glass full of, mm. like, you know, the, the stressors or whatever's going on in your life. But, you know, everyone has a different threshold for what right. they can kind of deal with. And I think when when we have these compounding things going on where our expectations are consistently not being met and it compounds on itself, mm-hmm. it makes it that much more difficult to right. want to sit with those feelings if there's, like, extra going right. on. Because it could be a chain effect, right? Like, well, if I feel these feelings, what if I have to feel those feelings? And there's more feelings? Right. No, I didn't sign up for that. That's yeah. not cool. And yeah, you're right. Sometimes we don't have the bandwidth for it. And it's kind of like, manage my expectations then about how I can... <laughs> what I have expectations and I should manage my expectations better. <laughs> right? So like, if sometimes I even like have people, like when I was uh, doing individual counseling, um... Like, you know, I'm trying to do the work, but I've got this stressful week and it's like I'm feeling all these things and it's like, well, take a step back. You don't have to feel all your feelings right now. Maybe there's some weeks where maybe you do have a really busy schedule. You have a lot on your plate. Is that the best time to go through like deep traumatic counseling right now? That's okay to wait until maybe some of that kind of falls off a little bit. We don't have to be like handling all the things all at once. We can put it on the back burner until we can actually have the bandwidth to to deal with it as long as we come back to it. Or you could ask for help. Yeah. That's another one. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I'm learning these things now. Uh, (laughs) Asking for help is great. I mean, honestly, I think for for folks who really struggle with managing their own expectations, Mm -hmm. it's a little bit also of like you expect you should be able to do this on your own and you don't need help. And so that's actually part of that is knowing when to stop and say, I don't think I can do all these things. Yes. Or I need help with this. Like maybe you're trying to lose weight and you just can't do it on your own. And you're like, I need help. Mm -hmm. And that changes the whole dynamic there because you're accepting the fact that maybe you you don't have the skill set and you do need assistance. And I think too, it's like, that is so empowering. I, I want help. I need help. And I can also learn to say no. That's also super empowering. I learned how to do that now too. (laughs) I think all of these things are so great because I mean, gosh, you know, there's these yahoos on the internet who are like, it's just so easy. All you have to do is this and this, and then you're going to be exactly where you need to be. And you're just like, shut up. Like (laughs) you are just like shaming everybody who's out there, who is working on themselves. 
And those are the people we just need to say, no, no, thank you. You're not who I want <laughs> feedback. I want to get help from people who really do support me and where I'm at and will listen. And um, it's just not another number um, on the scale or on the, the payroll, so to speak. <laughs> What, talk about setting terrible expectations for yourself mm-hmm. when you are listening to the voices that are like, it's easy. Yeah. And if you can't do it, you are um, lacking mental toughness. You are lacking willpower. When that is just so rarely the crux of the problem. Yes. Yes. Um, we talk about this in um, the medical weight management classes, and that's what the coursework is designed on is um, Dr. Vincent Folletti's uh, adverse childhood experiences um, uh, research he did, which talks about, like, it's rarely that people don't know what they're, like, what they should or shouldn't eat. It's rarely that, you know, people just love food too much. It's, that's not what leads to weight gain. It's the, you know, maybe there's something that happened in childhood that was traumatic or it's a way to cope with uncomfortable feelings or it's a way to you know uh sort of hide or kind of protect yourself um it's very rarely those things like you're talking like those those internal scripts that people have about themselves that i'm just lazy or unmotivated or if i just had the right plan um i'd be fine um and just imagine too you know if if someone is telling you those things if that's their you know, mindset. You just got to mm-hmm. do it. You just imagine what their self-talk sounds right. like. They don't let that themselves have an inch in life. Yeah. So we, we got to look at going back to where are we trying to get to? Right. Are we trying to get to some sort of happiness or are we trying to get to like some external outcome? Yeah. Yeah. Those external ones are always going to lead us back to just needing more, right? Shoving our feelings down with food. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. As I say, instead of feeling your feelings, you shove them down with food. You're like, no, 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 stay down, (laughs) stay down. I got more cupcakes coming, it's fine. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) But on that note, it's about that time. Already? I know. Stop. (laughs) Boy, well, Shannon, another fabulous conversation. So much fun. Thank you so much for coming in, chatting with us today. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. (laughs) All right, you guys, thanks for listening and make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, all the good things. Until next time, everybody. Bye. Bye.